Okay, another roof repair. I have never, ever had a roof repair like this one before. This thing right here is two stories and is one of the, in one of the most difficult places possible to have rotten wood. Look up here. Right there. And I uh, thought of an idea of how I could get this thing to work. I have all these ladders, as you can see, to be able to get up there to stand to get to that corner to fix the wood. There's another angle of my uh, contraption I had here. And if you're curious to know how the ladder stays up there, it's with this uh, roof boot here that I have nailed up under the shingle. And that's what holds a ladder, the ladder on, so you can stay up on the roof like that. Okay, finally made it up here now. Check this out. Here's a rotted area. You can see right here. This area here is also rotted as well. If you can see it, the plywood's kind of wavy. Okay, you can see how rotted this wood is right here. This uh, wafer board, once it gets wet, shambles. I had to come back to this rafter right here and get back to good good clean wood before you can uh, get a good bite because you have to have all get all your rotted wood out and then go back to a rafter where it's, you've got good clean wood again. I also want to let you guys know out there of how to get some nails out of your decking with a uh, cat claw, a little bar like this. You can dig your nails out of your wood and uh, get your hammer and just pull them out. All right, whenever you get your plywood out, it's always really important that you get all your old nails out and clean out all the debris like this here. You need to clean them out like that. And uh, of course, I don't have my hammer with me. And uh, well, that's good enough. Do it something like that there. And make sure they're nailed in flat. You can see just how rotten this uh, OSB is here. OSB stands for Oriented Strand Board. And that's where they have all these little chips and stuff mashed together and uh, create uh, four by eight sheathing with. We got our plywood on. The big question, how many nails do I put and what type of nail do I put in the decking to be up to code? Okay, here in Southeast Texas, I'm here in West Columbia. This is technically Inland 2, which is the least strictest zone from the coast. But regardless, um, your first two uh, rafters, your barge rafter and the gable end wall rafter needs to have your nails every four inches on center. The minimum nail you have to have is a two and a half inch by 131 galvanized nail. Here in Inland 2, you do not have to have galvanized, but it's a good habit to get into and get galvanized when you're this close to the coast. Um, here in the center, it's every six inches on center is what your nails need to be. Got our felt going on here. Next question is, how many nails do I put in the felt and what type? Code says here in Southeast Texas, um, that uh, all you have to have is a galvanized fastener as long as it's within 36 inches apart. Whenever you cut a starter, you cut it like this here. You cut it right to the top of the uh, water marks. The water marks are these little grooves that are right here. Let's see, watch your hand. Are these little grooves that are right there. Okay, another one is that, the little curved part. This would call the water groove. Cut a straight line right there. Okay, this is called your um, starter here. Okay, what you want is your glue strip you always glue? goes to the bottom, okay? Always go to the bottom of your edge because that's where your shingle seals down to this, okay? You can have about a half inch overlap depending on what manufacturer you have, usually half inch. Nobody really says anything about it. But your nails, you put your nails between about one to two and a half inches from the edge, but the main thing is you gotta be in solid wood and not hit between the uh, crack of the fascia board into the decking. It's very important because if your nail is not into anything solid, the wind can lift it up. Because if you can lift your starter up with two fingers, it ain't doing no good in the wind. Next thing is the most crucial of all. The head of your nail has got to be flush with the surface of the shingle. If it's not, it will not pass code and that would mean bad news. The whole roof would have to come back off again for overdriven nails. Next, the magical question is, where do I put the nails and the shingles? 
Your nails here, they go on your red line. Some brands have white lines, but they have to go, the shank of your nail must go through the double laminate. Now, what is a double laminate? A double laminate is this. If you see right here, you see the double? Let's see, let me see it right here. The double, okay? There's two little layers here. The shank of your nail has got to make it through the, both of those double layers. If it don't, it will not pass code. There's only two other brands out there that you technically can nail above the common bond double laminate and still be okay. Uh, this is not one of those brands. Most of them are not that way. So always you need to nail into the common bond double laminate, which is your line is really a guide. It's not the actual uh, direction to say if the nail is in the red line or whatnot, saying it's a pass or fail. Technically the pass or fail is, is if your nail is got to be in the common bond. That's what's gonna make or break you right there. Four nails are fine in this area, okay? Um, preferably some people put six, some people do the uh, one, two, two, one nail pattern. Uh, this one here, I just put four because here in the state of Texas, you can put four nails per shingle and still pass code because you follow the instructions, the instructions on the back of the wrapper. That is the code for windstorm for shingles and roofing. Okay, this is a perfect example of how to nail a shingle on here. You have your nail there, here, here, and right there. They're in fours, okay? They're in quarters. You can see that far back. They're all in, they're in quarters. You never want one here, because that's where the next joint's gonna be, and you never want your nail in the middle of your joint. But this is correctly of how to nail a shingle on and pass code, okay? If you wanted to put six, you can. You could add another one here or another one here. That's a one, two, two, one nail pattern. Uh, some brands require if they're just evenly spaced, you can do that too. Six nails are better, but four is good too. Here in the state of Texas, that is by our code, as per the manufacturer's instructions, that is. This here is what you call a toe jack or a uh, roof jack, whatever. It's all the same thing, okay? Uh, the main thing is you use a heavy duty nail. I would go with a, at least a 16 penny and you gotta find a, uh, a rafter to nail it into. I've already nailed this one here in, right here, as you can see. Those nails there are into solid two by six rafters. All right, now Jim's putting his uh, other nails like that right there. You hear that? That is exactly how you know you're in a nail when you hear in your uh, rafter is when you hear that nail go boom, boom, boom. You gotta be in something solid because I fell 12 foot on concrete seven years ago and uh, we're a whole lot higher than uh, 12 foot. So next we're gonna get our board. Now we have our toe jack here. And this is a two by 10 and that's the biggest, uh, widest uh, board you could get to use on your uh, toe jacks here. You just go up here and stand on it just like this. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? This is a bad, no, no, don't do it. Yep. Jim hanging in midair right there with his saw and his ladder, pulling it up by the cord. Yeah, kids, don't try this at home. That's true. Okay, this project's coming to an end. We got everything felted and shingled in at the same time. Here's the finished project. Right here. There's our same toe jack. Where's the coffee There are new shingles matching into the old, just like that. Last but not least, the most important thing of all that you can do is use your plastic roof cement. Not NP1, not silicone caulking. In, uh, blackjack is what you want to use, is your uh, plastic roof cement. It's the same chemical asphalt as the tar is. Wherever your uh, old shingles touch your new, you got to put just a little bit of tar. 
This is some gooey stuff. All you have to do is just do it in spots. You do not have to make a huge mess. Just in spots is fine, usually about six inches apart, something like that. Make sure and always hit your button to release the pressure on your tube. Also, very important, your shingle above, you also have got to put this down. If not, the shingles will not, I repeat, will not reseal themselves and they will blow up in the wind. Trust me, I know from experience, don't ask. So, this is very, very, very important. Also, your old nail holes, for example, uh, if I can lift one up, maybe. Uh, there's the old one, but you have old nail holes. For example, right here, I don't know if you can see the old hole. Yeah. Very important that we get those. Note that I'm not putting tar down on the new ones. The reason why is because it's already got its own sealant here. This is as though it's a brand new roof. So in this place here. So you do not have to put your plastic roof cement, but wherever... Um, the uh, old touches the new. The old touches the new. That's what you got to do right there. Okay, here I am at the edge. I'm on my own walk board now. A board. Yeah, real fun. So anyway, um, we're here uh, to take the uh, roof jack out. You can see it. It's how it's nailed in here. I can try to get it with my hand like that. It just comes right up, as you can see, just like that, right there piece of cake then you just nail your nails down okay just added my nails and just like this and uh, we're gonna put our plastic roof cement there basically that's all there is to a roof repair I know I made it look easy um, this is still not something I would recommend to do as a homeowner especially on a house like this um, when in doubt call a professional because I fell 12 foot on concrete years ago and I'm way much higher than 12 foot as I said before um earlier but anyway um, that's about it for this video and uh, as you can see roof is complete roof repair is done plywood's nailed as per code and uh that's it so any questions you can always feel free to write me